Welcome to lecture 15.1, Nonlinear Systems in MATLAB. Many of the MATLAB tools we've used will not work for nonlinear systems, unfortunately. For instance, system definition with TF, SS, and ZPK, so transfer function, state space models, and then uh, another transfer function um, construction, ZPK. Uh, those won't work. Um, and simulation with LSIM, step, initial, etc., those, those functions. Um, none of these will work for nonlinear systems. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, but what is nice is that we, we uh, can still use nonlinear state space models in MATLAB. It's um, just a little bit more work. So uh, we have to do some things ourselves that MATLAB was doing for us. We can define a nonlinear system in MATLAB by defining its state space model in a function file. Consider the nonlinear state space model, which is uh, so the state equation uh, is x dot equals f of x. So this is a homogeneous, or, uh, sorry. Um, oh, what's the term that I used before? Not homogeneous. Mm. Anyways, it's a nonlinear state space uh, model, state equation. So x dot equals the right hand side here um, is a vector valued functional, technically, uh, of x2 and x1. So this is the second state variable and the first state variable x1 and x2 and x1. So it's clearly nonlinear. Um, and it's called a van der Poel equation, actually. A function file describing it is as follows. So um, I'll just print out the contents of the vanderpool.m file that I created, uh, which includes this little snippet here. This is the entire file, actually. Function dx dt equals vanderpool of t comma x. So it has to be a function of time and the state variable um, vector x. Then we return, so how we declare a return in MATLAB functions is to set the variable that we put on the left-hand side of the equals after function. So dx dt equals, and then it has to return a vector of the same size as x. So it returns x of two, which is this value there, x of two, and then it returns this this expression, which is the, the lower term here. So 1 minus x1 squared times x2 minus x1. So it's just the right-hand side of the state equation. Okay. Note that x is re representing the two-state vector x, which, along with time, are passed as arguments to van der Poel. The variable dx dt serves as the output or return of the function. Effectively, van der Poel is simply f of x, so it's just the right-hand side of the state equation. So that is actually sufficient to define our uh, differential equation, our nonlinear state uh, uh, equation. So the nonlinear state equation is a system of first order ODEs, right? MATLAB has several numerical ODE solvers that perform well for nonlinear systems. When choosing a solver, the foremost considerations are ODE stiffness and required accuracy. Stiffness occurs when solutions evolve on drastically different time scales. For a more thorough guide for selecting an ODE solver, check out this link which takes you to the MathWorks website um, and they have a discussion of the different solvers. I think there are probably um, maybe eight to ten different ODE solvers to choose from. However, for most ODEs, the ODE45 Runge-Kutta solver is the best choice, so try it first. Its syntax is paradigmatic of all MATLAB ODE solvers, so it returns 
time and a time array and a uh, uh, the response um, y. So um, we could have used x there. Probably should have used x there. Uh, ODE forty five. So that's the call to the solver. We give it the function handle for the function file. So uh, above it was Vanderpool. So that's what it would be here. Um, uh, uh, either a time array or a span of time. So from zero to three seconds, you could just put in a vector zero comma three, and it would output a time array that corresponds to the output um, x and uh, an initial state. So this is essentially giving us an initial uh, condition response uh, for this for this function. Details here include the ODE function must have exactly two arguments t and x. The time array or span doesn't impact solver steps. So you could give it a time array that has specific time steps in it, um, but it's going to completely ignore those. And it will, in the end, it'll do its solving using whatever time steps it thinks are best adaptively. And then it will return the time, uh, uh, your output values at whatever time array you specified or whichever time array it finds to be uh, suitable. And uh, three, the initial conditions must be specified in a vector size matching the state vector x. So if your state vector x, if you have like a fourth order system, you have a four by one vector, your initial state has to be a four by one vector as well. So let's apply this to our example from above. We begin by specifying the simulation parameters. So we have x naught, the initial conditions, being three and zero, we have two state variables. We specify that the first state variable x1 will be start out at three. Second state variable x2 will start out at zero. Uh, we'll have a lin space construction of the time array. From zero to 25 seconds, we'll take 300 values. And now we simulate. So I don't need the time array out because it's just going to be exactly the same as the time array that I put in. So I just put this tilde in there, which ignores the assignment of that variable. And uh, I assign to x the uh, uh, output of this ODE45. I give it my function handle, which you have to use the at at the beginning. That's important. Um, and then time array, initial conditions, um, and just execute that line and it will do the simulation. Now, assuming that your solver is appropriate for this problem and that you don't have a problem that's ill-conditioned and you gave it everything that's correct, it will just go ahead and do the, the numerical solution. And uh, then we can plot it. So uh, in time, the response is shown in figure 15.1. So we can plot it with the usual way. So T a, our time array on the horizontal axis, and then um, x. I took the transpose here because I have two x uh, variables, response variables, and then there's a value at each um, a point in time. And so I had to take the transpose to match it up with the time array dimensions. Um, that's just a, a little um, sort of important note. Uh, and we get this free response of each variable. So uh, x1 is in blue and x2 is in red. And we get this uh, starting out at 3, which was the initial condition given um, for x1. And then x2 starts out at 0. And we see these sort of uh, after a little bit of transient, we see them settle into a periodic function that uh, is certainly not sinusoidal. Um, it's periodic, but not sinusoidal. And it's not a uh, decaying exponential either. Um, we would perhaps expect it to be a decaying exponential 
uh, from our uh, experiences with linear systems or just simply a sinusoid um, if it was marginally stable but uh, we're not seeing a decay and we're not seeing a sinusoid um, we're not seeing a growth either so we're just seeing um, this periodic function emerge that is non-sinusoidal as value 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 etc um, 300 long so so 300 by 2 The time array was constructed with lin space, so it shows up as a um, 1 by 300. 1 by 300 array. So when we plot it, we could take the transpose of time or the transpose of x to match up the dimension, the 300 dimension here. Notice that in x, the 300 dimension is um, is the first dimension whereas in time it's the second dimension so we either transpose time uh, or we transpose x the transpose operator in MATLAB is dot prime um, prime will also work uh, but it will take the complex conjugate if it's complex which for us they're all real so it wouldn't matter but it's a little bit um, it's important to uh, get used to using this one just in case we run into a, 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 com a complex vector and we don't want to take its complex conjugate transpose. This is conjugate transpose. This is just regular transpose. So this is the one we want. Good. So we've got this response x1, x2 through time. Now this is informative but uh, Another way to look at this is to plot x1 and x2 versus each other. So if we plot x1 and then x2, um, and we have time implicit here, so time is implicit. This is, of course, the phase space representation of of uh, 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 a response okay so um, implicit so we started out at x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 0 that was our initial condition and then as we evolve this in time we move along here and we go around in this sort of sort of beautiful loop um, and we start to return and just cycle around here repeatedly over and over again. If it was sinusoidal, it would show up as a perfect circle, um, but it doesn't show up sinusoidal. Uh, if it was a decaying sinusoid, it would show up as an inward spiraling circle. Um, but of course it doesn't, doesn't look like it's decaying and it doesn't look like it's sinusoidal at all, it's certainly not. Um, so we've got our response. Even though uh, it's a nonlinear system, we could pretty easily get its uh, state response. And of course, we could then compute its output response if we wanted to as well, um, which just depends on the state and uh, the input. So that's, uh, that's pretty much that. You can adapt this technique to uh, uh, systems that have input in it explicitly. Uh, and the only the only uh, thing we need to do in order to make that happen is to add the input function um, arguments in here. So maybe maybe we had an input, we would just put a comma, maybe u here for what the input is. Um, and we could have a separate function file for what the input is uh, or we could explicitly build it in maybe the input um, maybe the input is just uh, just say say uh, cosine 
3t or something like that. Um, that would be just fine. Uh, we would have a uh, it would enter in then in some in some way. Maybe it enters in um, just into this first uh, uh, value of f of t of the of the state uh, mo of the state space equation of the state equation function f of x, uh, it would be f of x u then, and it would show up maybe there, we would have, so like plus u or like plus, so you could either put like plus u of t if you wanted to, or or you could do uh, cosine 3t. Notice that t shows up explicitly here. Uh, so you can use values of time, and you could include input there um, pretty easily. Um, and you could even do, there are other things you can do here. This is just a very simple mathematical statement. You can also do more complex constructions with if statements, um, where you could have uh, piecewise functions that are entering. So this is pretty flexible. And the only thing to note is that uh, when we call it here, um, the ODE function um, does have to be a, a, a function of just time and x. That's okay. Um, we can. There's a little trick we can do, which is we can create a um, just an inline as that argument. We can create a little inline anonymous function of time and x. And then we can um, call our ODE function. So uh, ODE function, in this case Vanderpool, of time and x. And then you can put in your other arguments here, like u. Um, and it'll run, run just fine, like that. So that's how to do a nonlinear system simulation in MATLAB.